Would you like to be able to tell if individuals are lurking in the darkness in your backyard after the sun goes down? Then I would encourage you to build and deploy a number of glow stick booby traps. It's Survival Solutions USA here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to construct and deploy glow stick or chem light booby traps. So the basis for this uh, trap is going to be simply a rat trap. That's going to be the engine that we use to break the chem light. And you're going to need a good quality rat trap as the uh, basis for the, uh, the, the trap here. I would recommend these Tomcat rat traps uh, because of the quality of the wood. They almost have what feels like a, a hardwood base rather than a softer wood, almost like bal balsa wood. Uh, that some or, or pine is usually what uh, are on, in mice traps but these tomcat rat traps have a really hard uh, wood that's going to come into play here as we uh, build the trap so you're going to need a rat trap you're going to need a number of zip ties uh, both to secure the chem light uh, to the trap and uh, to secure the trap to whatever medium you're going to be driving into the ground to set the trap up so it can be sprung rat trap, zip ties, some kind of a chem light. There are a number of different brands uh, of these uh, glow sticks. Uh, you're going to need a, uh, some of these little eyelets, little screws that have a loop on them. We're going to use those to help direct uh, the tripwire. I'm using dental floss for my tripwire because there's a lot of it on each roll and it's very small and easy to carry. You may want to use a uh, Sharpie marker and included, you may also want some kind of cutters, uh, wire cutters, or other items like that, along with some spray paint if you're interested in coloring uh, the trap once you're done with it. To help it blend into the situation you're going to be in. You may also want a pair of pliers in order to bend the pan on the rat trap. So let's get started here and show you exactly how I planned on uh, constructing this. And you can uh, feel free, you don't have to follow what I do exactly in order to do this. You may want to uh, build uh, your chem light trap in any number of different ways using the, uh, the, the rat trap here. You're also going to need a drill, uh, which I forgot about, okay? And that's gonna be to be drilling these holes. So the first thing you're going to do is get your rat trap out here and uh, you're going to want to take your pair of pliers and grab the pan and bend it slightly, like 30 or 40 degrees. So you're just going to hook it here and, and bend it up, being careful not to dislodge uh, the other portions of the system. found the easiest way was to just grab it like that and bend it. The reason we're doing that is so that it does not uh, get in the way of the of the glow stick once the trap is set. If you leave it straight the glow stick will actually get in the way and be very hard to spring the trap uh, if, if you do that incorrectly. So you're going to need to to bend the pan and I would encourage you to do that first thing. You can see the degree there maybe a 45 degree angle just out a little bit. Then you're going to want to drill some holes in the rat trap. The first two holes that I would encourage you to drill are right here. That's going to be how you attach the chem light with a zip tie. You know, I think uh, the zip ties are probably the easiest and simplest way to do this. I set the trap up with the chem light pointing down from where it would be sprung so that when it breaks everything mixes together more easily. Some people might run a this way I think that running the chem light down even though it takes more space is probably a better use of the space because of the way it's going to encourage the mixing of the chemicals in the chemical in the chem light. At this point it's time to install uh, the holes into the base of the rat trap. And you're just going to want to uh, drill these holes. I'd use a, a decent sized drill bit in order to make the holes big enough that whatever size zip tie you're going to be using slides easily in and out. Now you're going to need either seven holes or nine holes depending on how you choose to do this. The first two holes are going to go right up here. That's how you're going to attach your chem light with a zip tie. Very easy to do. 
and that's going to be oriented down when we actually set the trap up. The next uh, six holes that I would drill are going to be, as you can see in the through the back here, but these are going to be two here that I can put a zip tie through and attach the trap to whatever pole. These are going to be the, the the holes that I'm going to use either for wire or zip ties to attach the, the trap oriented like this so that the trip line will be sprung and then it will come down and break the chem light in, in the natural environment where I want to put this trap. So that's what these one, two, three, four, five, six holes are going to do. You wouldn't have to do double up and have two down there, but I, that just gives me better mounting options for the trap. So you can see here we got the two for the chem light, the one over here uh, that I haven't talked about yet is for the little uh, screw with the little eyelet on it. And that's what I'm going to use to direct uh, the, the trip line from the pan of the trap through here. And that's going to mean that no matter what direction uh, the individual comes from that's going to spring the trap, it directs the line and keeps uh, the consistency of the, the trap springing. It increases its uh, consistency by having this eyelet here. You would have to do that, but I really think that, that makes the trap much more uh, reliable. Let's see if I can not snap my fingers in this thing yet. So then once you're done that, these are the little eyelet that I used. I did clip a portion. I did clip a section off uh, uh, there so that it wouldn't stick out the back. And I drilled a much smaller hole uh, than these. I drilled a much smaller hole there and then just threaded this down in, just twisted it in with a pair of uh, pliers so that it wouldn't split uh, the wood face that I'm using here. It's evening here now and I've already sprung this particular trap once. Uh, using the chem light here. And I'm just going to show you guys how I would now install uh, or deploy these traps. I have a fence here on one side and if I spin right around here you can see the post I'm going to be using and I've got shrubs and a post here to attach the other side of the trip line to. And this is going to channel people with this fence here and these shrubs here. It's going to channel people through this walkway and that's what I'm going for. Okay. And as you deploy any kind of trap, you're looking for those high traffic areas, whether you're trying to trap animals or use this chem light trap to alert you to the presence of individuals. Just setting it out in the middle of an open field is not probably going to work as well as using a high traffic area. I'm going to zoom in here on the trap. You can see I've secured it with zip ties to the fence. And that I, I like using the zip ties because it's very rapid and easily... Uh, to attach it. You're going to want to make sure that this is attached uh, tightly to the fence, that there's not a lot of wiggle room as you try to do this. Because if there is a lot of movement, as you try and set the trap, you're going to increase your chances of snapping the trap and uh, hitting the glow stick before you want to, to hit the glow stick. At this point, I'm going to be installing my actual trip wire now. That's why I'm zoomed in. Let me tip this a little bit more. Now you can see here is that little Eyelet. and I'm going to run my trip wire again. I'm using dental floss because I can carry so much of it and it's so little. I know it's white. Guess what? It's not going to matter uh, because this is going to be a trap that's employed at night. Also, uh, an important thing to, to pay attention to as you set this up is the location is going to be important uh, because <laughs> if you set this up in, in a way that you're not going to be able to see it, see the light as the glow stick is fired, it's pointless. So, so how you orient this is going to be important. And the trap, how you orient it, depending on where you're going to be, is going to be important uh, as you think about how you're going to set this trap up. I'll zoom out here a little bit. Yeah. Zoom out. And now I'm going to show you guys how we set this. You set it just exactly like a standard uh, trap here. And uh, because I've already hit the glow stick once and cracked it, it doesn't really matter here if it does a couple times. There you go. All right. Now the, the trap is set. Now I'm just going to run the cord tension out here. You can see it there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it. Woo! You can see it is very touchy. <laughs> okay. It's very touchy. And so it might be wise to, to wait to install the uh, glow stick until you've got it fully set up and then spring it and then install the glow stick. Okay, there we go. I don't need this line to be super taut. It's going to be depending mostly on that the, the trap being very touchy as it is. So if somebody just bumps this line now, it's going to go off. So I'm just going to wrap it two or three times now once they've got the tension around and then I'm just going to cut it off. 
It's nice too that the dental floss, most dental floss containers already have a little blade there to uh, cut it off. So there you go. I've got this tension now on the line and it does not take very much. I mean, I'm just laying my hand here. Boom, it goes off. It takes very, very little uh, to actually uh, fire that, woo, fire that line. And you can see, I'm, I, my problem is being making this trap not so touchy. Let's see if I got some line in it or something. Because this tends to be, these rat traps are relatively sensitive. You know, they're made to be set off by a small rodent. There we go. So this trap is set up now. You can see the tension again. I'm just going to lay my hand. You can just see, boom, it's going off. So sensitivity is not going to be a problem because we're already using a, a trap that's designed to catch a small rodent in it. I'm going to wait till it gets a little bit darker here, and then I'm going to reinstall a glow stick and show you guys what it's like. There is the Kim Light booby trap set up. The trip line runs right there, and there is where it's attached to. The bushes and the fence are creating that channeling effect, and it's ready to go. So I'm just going to walk through it here and show you guys what it is like uh, when this glow stick trap is fired and how easy it is to instantly tell in pitch black and it is it is fully dark out here uh, turn my light off here and I'm just gonna walk through and show you guys how effective this is <laughs> you can probably see me I hope this video has been beneficial to you it's very simple to take a rat trap and a chem light and a couple zip ties and make a very effective little booby trap that you can use as an early warning device to let you know what's going on outside in the dark. Uh, just a couple little tips or tricks as you do this. It's uh, beneficial to vary the height of your trip wire so people don't get used to them being just on the ground or right near uh, their chests or faces. You can also use the height of your trip line to allow you to avoid having pets or animals spring your, uh, your booby traps. And you may choose to zip tie the uh, top of the uh, snap in portion to the top of the trap as you are uh, attaching the chem lights. After you've already set the trap up, it, it's very hard to manipulate the chem light and the zip tie and make sure that it, you don't accidentally spring the, the trap onto the chem light as you're setting it up. So zip tie that portion that swings down up and uh, then once you're done you can just clip that zip tie and lower it, lower it down and then set the trap at the appropriate sensitivity that you're wanting to use. I hope this video has been beneficial to you, that you've taken something useful away from it. I think these booby trap chem lights have a lot of different applications and it might be beneficial in a survival situation. My goal is to produce quality videos on urban, suburban, and wilderness survival solutions that will be beneficial to you and your family if you ever encountered a survival situation.